Africa. We know the Europeans were establishing colonies in Africa and Asia. After that, the decolonization began. In comparison to Asian continent, decolonization began late in Africa. After Asian continent, Africa is the second largest one. African continent was known as unknown continent during 18th century in the history of the world because of its thick forests, vast lakes and deserts. The area of this continent is 3 crores 2 lakhs 77,135 square kilometer. History divides it into two parts, that is, religious and ethnic. The continent is divided into two parts due to the Sahara Desert. Both the parts of this desert are not in contact due to its remoteness. Hence there are differences between two parts in the fields of culture, religion and political background. Trade of Slaves the European nations had started trades and industries in Africa, along with slave trade. African colonies used ships going towards eastern nations to supply materials such as gold, minerals and ivory, as well as slaves. Selling slaves was the main trade. Portuguese traders were first to take African slaves to their nation. Trade of slaves was in existence since ancient time in Africa. Arabian traders also did the same trade for hundreds of years before and used to sell the African slaves on a large scale in Western Asian countries. European people took advantage of the backwardness of Africans and made them quarrel among themselves as well as encouraged the battles for capturing of slaves. The African people who were captured were sold as slaves. Slaves were hard working for their masters in newly established European colonies. Slave trade was one of the reasons for colonialism. Inhumanity, cruelty and injustice were behind the slave trade. The common people of Europe, ignorant about this trade, showed their sympathy and also made Negro slaves to escape. The movements started to prohibit slave trade. In America, law was passed against it and slaves were released. Though slavery system was prohibited in America, it was not prohibited in Arabian countries. The trade of slaves was still existing in Arabian countries. British established their power over the regions of Nyasaland and Uganda and completely closed way of Arabs to obtain slaves. Thinkers during the period of Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela themselves spent their lives to root out slavery system and racial discriminations. Consequences First, nationalism spread among European colonies due to the national movements in Asia. National movements in Asia affected the minds of African people. Africa concentrated its attention towards Indian national movement. African nationalists were impressed by Mahatma Gandhiji's non-violence movement held in southern Africa and Indian National Movement. Second, international political incidents affected the minds of African people and they demanded the total freedom. Two reactions came out through national movements in Africa. One was to make treaty with the colonizer and the other to give freedom to them. That's why India Brahmadesh, Sri Lanka, etc. 
nations from Asian countries received freedom and second was that France, Holland, Portugal, etc. spoiled national movements. Hence, Ghana, Rhodesia, Kenya, etc. nations obtained freedom very late. Third, first, on one hand, events took place at the international levels related towards colonialism. Second, on the other hand, the European nations became weaker and weaker due to participation in the Second World War. Third, after the Second World War, national movement against colonialism became more active and England was unable to resist it. England released its colonies which were under its power in Africa and Asia. At the same time, France, Holland, Portugal, etc. tried to exist their colonialism by suppressing national movement. National movements were spread in Asian and African continents and the events took place in the world related with emancipation from colonialism under pressure of international thoughts against colonialism western countries had released the colonies which were under their power thus the process of decolonization was completed colonization in africa courageous european tourists mango park captain spake sir samuel baker David Livingstone and American newspaper reporter H. M. Stanley had obtained the information of internal parts of Africa. Stanley published the valuable books and gave significant information about the continent to the Europeans. Industrial revolution, growing population and rising imperialism made the European nations turn their attention towards African continent. European imperialists came to know about the continent of Africa, its vast area and its minerals by the end of 19th century. As a result, England, France, Belgium, Holland, Arab and Germany started their competition to acquire colonies in Asia and Africa. At the same time, European countries also started their voyages and expeditions to find the new sea route. Hence, European countries were in forefront in establishing their colonies in Asia and Africa. First, Belgium. Belgium was the first nation to concentrate its attention on Africa. The second king of Belgium, Leopold, was very ambitious and intellectual. He spent money on Congo region of Africa and established his own free settlement in Congo. In limited span, he exploited the people in Congo. He accumulated huge wealth by his oppressive and exploitative policies. In 1908, the Legislative Council of Belgium took over the region of Belgium from Leopold's authority and power and the region was known as Belgium Colony. Thus, the first European colony was established in Africa. European nations were attracted towards the natural and mineral resources of Africa because they had seen that Leopold had obtained huge wealth from Congo region. European nation had taken first step of colonizing in Africa in 1871. There was scope of imperialism in Africa as there were gold and silver mines. Hence, after setting up the colony of Belgium in Africa, other European nations started to settle and make their own colonies in Africa. 
we found the effect of industrialization all over the world, as well as the settlements of colonies in the Africa continent during 18th century. After industrial revolution, European nations' attention was attracted towards Africa to establish new colonies and new market to sell their products and to buy cheap raw materials. First, the rise of middle class. All colonial powers established the educational institutions to give education and to make use of them for administration. European tried to force the colonies to follow their culture, to accept their religion and to speak their language. New middle class was formed due to European educational system and with the contact of foreign culture, lawyers, teachers, common man, traders, etc. were included in the new middle class. They came to know about general conditions, European countries and the concepts like democracy nationalism, literacy, etc. From this knowledge, they came to know about the critical conditions of economic exploitation, poverty and slavery system. Second, Portugal and Spain. Portugal was the first European nation which established first permanent colony in Africa on the border of Ghana territory. Portugal empowered over the region Angola and established a new colony on the border of Eastern Africa named Mozambique. Spain established power over the islands which in Guinea coast, some region of Morocco and some region of Rio de Oro like Portugal. Second, the rise of nationalism. The spirit of nationalism was imbibed in African colonies. They began to think about freedom. Thus, national movement were raised in the colonies. The process of decolonization had begun late in Africa than Asian continent. They needed more time for decolonization almost up to the end of 20th century. The main reasons were its natural resource separation among many castes, subcastes of African society, and weaker national movements, and late received Western education. At last, national movements led them to get their freedom. Third, Dutch. Dutch people established supply center at Cape Town in southern part for the ships, which were going towards east. Then the center was converted in, into a large colony. Dutch established their colonies in Orange Free State as well as Transvaal. Third, National Movement Kwame Kruma got freedom to the Gold Coast colony, which is known as Ghana region, by organized form of national movement in 1957, whereas a famous leader, Jomo Kenyatta from Kenya, organized the movement Mau Mau and Kenya became free from British rule. Robert Mugabe's patriotic front party fought against British and obtain freedom to the nation, West Rhodesia, now known as Zimbabwe. Nelson Mandela fought a long battle in South Africa against colonialism and discrimination of colors and ethnic group. By the end of 20th century, all colonies in Africa became free. Fourth, French. France established and brought under their power the important colonies like Senegal and Gabon 
at the western border of Africa. After that, French brought under their control the region of northern Congo, and in 1883, France joined Ivory Coast to their reign. France declared Port Nova region as safety region. France challenged Portugal and brought under their control Dohomey region, which was at western side of Nigeria. By 1914, French brought under its control and power the region from Sahara Desert of North South Africa to West Ivory Coast and up to French Jean. Fifth, British. Britain was not behind among European countries to establish the colonies in Africa. British established their market for the trade of slaves in Sierra Leone and then they established colony for escaped Negro slaves. Up to 1906, England brought under its control and power the regions Cape of Good Hope, Natal, Transvaal, Rhodesia, Orange Free State, Nyasaland, Zanzibar, Pemba, and Uganda. In 1920, British established Union Territory with the combination of the four colonies, that is, Cape of Good Hope, Natal, Orange Free State, and Transvaal. Sixth, Germany. Like Britain, Germany too established its colonies in Africa. After integration, Germany participated in the competition of colonization. Chancellor of Germany named Bismarck established its first colony in West North Africa through his trade policy in 1883. German researcher Dr. Gesteb Nordwigel was sent to establish the right over Tongoland, Cameroon, Angora Pekwena regions of Africa. By the Treaty of Self-Defense between Germany and Negro King, Germany established its right over Africa. Then the region was known as Tongoland. After some years, Germany established its right over West South Africa. And in 1884-85, in Berlin Conference, Germany's power over the colonies like Tongoland, Cameroon, and Southwest Africa, etc., were granted. From the beginnings to end of the 19th century, entire African continent was suffering from European imperialism, establishment of colonies, and unification of them. Division of African continent had begun from the beginning of 19th century and it was divided among European countries during the next hundred years, since beginning of First World War to the ending of the Second World War. African continent was under the power of European countries. Due to colonialism of Europeans, underdeveloped and backward countries had become weaker and weaker in the fields of wealth, including natural resources. Slavery system continued over the undeveloped and backward countries. Those countries remained only as the markets of raw material and refined goods. Due to its effects, native occupations and industries decreased. Many industries were closed and the native people became poorer and poorer. The European countries tried to force native Africans to accept their culture and religion. Europeans tried to make conflict among the proper native folks as well as tried to decrease their moral values. The Europeans established their rights and control over the poor public. Thus, they established their empire. 
though there was democracy in European countries, they supported the local monarchy in Africa, for their existence forever in Africa. For the same reason, injustice, exploitation increased greatly. Its another example was trade of slaves. Decolonization of Africa From the period of First World War to the Second World War, African continent was under the power of Europeans. Europeans had not easily obtained the power over the African continent. For that purpose, they opposed the local monarchs. But at the end of the 19th century, the national integration took place against Western European countries. Conclusion The continent was known as unknown continent has now completely changed. Free nations accepted the new thoughts and this continent's darkness had disappeared forever. An Africa continent began to develop.